1965 Olds Modified Stalker. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody, welcome back to another unboxing video right down here at Monster Hobbies. My name is Trevor and I own this store along with my wife Julie who says, what's in the box in the opening video. <laughs> Anyway, today we are going to be looking at a, another cool oval track racer. Now, I, I did two of these before back in the past, a 36 Chevy and a 34 Ford. So you can check those out at the end of this video and like them. Anyway, uh, before we begin, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Let's get this video up to 100 likes and pound that notification bell so that every time I make a video, you're the first one to see it. And now without further ado, Race fans, let's go down to the pits at our oval track and see what's in the box. In the early 1950s, the car to beat was the Oldsmobile. It had racked up many, many wins on the racing circuit with its great 303 cubic inch V8 engine. Oldsmobile took a break up until 1965 and they came back with this type of car that was the equivalent to the Pontiac GTO. And Oldsmobile was trying to get onto the muscle car circuit with the 442. Now tonight we get to see the 65 Olds 88 modified stalker, which is a modified version of, of course, 1965 Oldsmobile. So we're just gonna take a look at this. This is a 2006 release from AMT Ertl under RC2 label. So, uh, as we look at the side of the box here, we can see a couple of photos of the completed model. So you can see, of course, the engine view, the uh, side of the body looking through the window, and of course the rear three-quarter view, which is quite nice. And if we turn the box this way, of course, we see the picture on the end of the box, which is the same as a cover. And now here we've got our write-up on the car. And of course right here it's saying 2006 RC2 brands and made in China. Olds is registered from GM and the Goodyear, official license Goodyear tires in here. And if we move the box over this way we can see that it is a skill level 2 kit. For ages 10 and up, will require some glue and some painting, of course. Now, originally, this is an older issue kit that's been reboxed by the good old people at <laughs> RC2. Uh, originally, this kit came out in 1968, 1969, in that time period, when the modified stalkers were really getting a lot of popularity. These of course were driven on the dirt track circle. Now let's take a, a look at what's in the box here and just remove our lid and we're going to look at the instructions in just a minute. So I'll move those to the side over here and of course here's our decal sheet. I'm going to take this paper off at the end just as a mystery. <laughs> toward the end of the video. Okay, I wanted to show you guys how this was packaged before I go ripping it open. We've got our tires in the bag here. We've got our body. Now the nice thing is RC2 had stuffed in some cardboard here into the window pillar frames here so that it wouldn't get crushed in the box if something were to happen. So that was good planning on their part. Of course, our chrome is all bagged separately here, so it will not scratch into the glass, which is also oops, taped to the gray plastic, but it's right here in its own bag. And that was a nice touch, nice thing that they did back in the day of 2006. And as we get to the bottom of the box, we also see that our chassis is mounted on this piece of cardboard here, so again, it will not break in packaging. So there's our empty box. And let's move that out of the way and we'll get right into our instructions.
Now here we have our instruction sheet for the 1965 Oldsmobile Modified Stalker. This is a reproduction of the original instruction sheet and right away we get to see the engine. One thing I liked about this era is the sort of Star Trek style lettering that they had. This of course is popular in uh, AMT kits coming out from 68-69. Uh, now this instruction sheet opens up like a booklet this way but the illustrations are quite large and we're not getting the entire instruction sheet here so I will just close this up a bit here and zoom in to fill up our screen with the imagery. Okay so the Oldsmobile engine in 1964 this engine was a 330 cubic inch engine and to better compete with the Pontiac GTO, GM replaced this engine with a 400 cubic inch engine. Now you may think that they actually bored the 330 up to 400 cubic inch, but if you thought that, you would be wrong. What they had done was they took the bigger 425 cubic inch engine from the larger Oldsmobiles, and for the Cutlass 442s, they filled in the cylinder heads and then re-bored them to make them 400 cubic inch. So they took out 25 cubic inch from this engine, but in doing so they made it a faster, more competitive engine equal to that that was found in the 64 GTO. So that's a bit of interesting Oldsmobile history for you. So our picture here is quite exact. We have our air cleaner and our Rochester four barrel carburetor sitting on the intake manifold. Our distributor cap is in the back, which, uh, yeah, which is correct for an Oldsmobile engine. The valve covers and our cylinder heads are going together here. There should be another set here. We just have to assume that you've got a left and right hand side. Uh, you've got your oil filter going on here and the starter motor on the same side as your driver's compartment. So your um, steering linkages will come down here on this side. This is the only motor GM has that runs, uh, let me think, counterclockwise. Or was it clockwise? Er. <laughs> but it runs in reverse to all the other GM engines. Uh, we have our front cover which includes our timing chain cover and water pump. The pulley assembly, the fan, and the alternator, and the oil pan. So, very nicely done. Very nicely drawn. Now, let's open this up here. So, for our second assembly, we have our chassis and wheels. So, here we have our battery going inside here and resting on our frame. The metal axles going through and our assembled wheels and tires, which they show up in this section. And then they say here, to achieve realistic dirt track type tires, score grooves, score groove patterns of your choice with a hobby knife or jeweler's file. So you can cross hatch these things. For paved track type, sand the tires, sand the tire surface. So I'm having to read from far away here. So you can either have slicks with a sanded finish, or you can attempt to cross hatch these tires and I think a, a good way to do that is if you have a uh, a model railroad style file which is an atlas uh, skill saw or hobby saw any rate you could make um, two blocks beside these tires with a angled uh, groove in there and then saw each angle into your tire and then turn it over, put it back between the, the blocks with the same angle and go the other way. You should get a cross hatched type pattern like they show here. And then of course onto our chassis goes our engine which drops in there. This is basically a stock engine. Oh, it is a modified stalker after all. And then we've got our exhaust manifolds. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention in here, which we will see in the decal sheet, but um, this engine is actually the 425 cubic inch that they have in the kit as called out for on the decals. So what they would have done is taken the 425 or 400 out of this car 
and dropped in the bigger 425 from the larger Oldsmobiles. All right, so now we take a look at our interior. This is, of course, a full race interior. We have no bench seat in the back. We've got these metal covers that would be probably made out of aluminum for lightweight, which are going to cover over the seat and come down. There's a fire extinguisher and a single bucket seat with the racing harnesses, as well as our gear shift, our steering wheel, instrument panel, and tachometer. Carrying on with the interior, we come up to this panel, which shows this multi-pieced roll bar with the padding to protect your driver. And it just drops into this section here, right around the driver himself, or herself, <laughs> or themself, they self. Okay, anyway, moving along. We have the body as step number five, cement all parts together unless otherwise indicated. Hood, do not cement. And this hood has the hood pins. I had a car with hood pins. Uh, so you have no uh, spring assembly in here, a locking mechanism for locking your hood down. There'd be two little pins that stick there that go through these holes in the hood. And the pins have a hole in through the side, which you put in a locking key, which looks like a big cotter pin, basically. You get a front windshield. There's no window in the back, because, of course, when you're racing, you want as much weight reduced as possible. And then we have our firewall here and a little radiator, a race-ready radiator, uh, as opposed to the larger Oldsmobile stock radiator, which would have been in there. And then we get into our final assembly at the back. Cement all parts together unless otherwise indicated. So we have two mirrors which would go on here. It says optional location. You could do them like the Japanese style where they have them way out here on the front fenders. Anyway, uh, the grill goes in here. And there's a spoiler that goes on the bottom of the grill. There's a screen that goes inside the grill here. The headlights are blanked off with metal plates, which is typical to the racing of this era. Even now, I guess, you could do that. Um, they, they would remove the headlight assembly, because again, that's extra weight, and blank it off with some aluminum or even steel, lightweight steel, of course, or tin even, uh, covers. Okay, and then you've got a front bumper with a shield. So again, this is a dirt track car. So these kind of bumpers here would uh, help you if you got too close to somebody on the dirt track. Here you've got your side bumpers as well, uh, in case you get T-boned. And then we've got this big aluminum panel here, which would cover over the bottom trim. And those big exhaust pipes go into these header collectors right here. And then if we just move this down a little bit, you'll see the back end of the car with our rear bumper. And another big rear bumper brace in here and a shield to go in the center and then our fuel cap goes on and it says optional location so you could put it up you know around here or wherever you feel that it should go <laughs> basically so now with our instructions done let's actually take a look at our plastic components and here's our body shell for our modified stalker. And if you'll notice, all the trim has been removed and our wheel openings have been enlarged to take up those gigantic wheels. They're also pushed up quite high into the body. This may be because they would have lowered the suspension on this car. Or not actually lowered it, but raised it up through the body, going up this way to get more of a uh, closer to the ground type of clearance for this car for better handling on that racetrack. Now the only real detail in this body is the grill here for fresh air in induct or whatever to get fresh air into the the uh, interior compartment of our car. Now this would of course still be factory. The hoods stop here and then you get your vents but uh, they don't, in later years, the car has actually covered this over with the edge of the hood. But this, of course, is still 1965, so we're not quite there yet. 
Now at first I thought this body might have been from 66 because 66 is the first time that they coke bottle the rear fenders like it is here but uh, 65 was still straight across but keeping in mind that these wheels have been pushed up here this may have been a body modification just for this particular race series. Now I kind of have a thought that this car may have been part of a promotional at one time and they altered the molds to it so that they can make this modified street racer because again here we have our peg and pole type or peg and post type of uh, body mounting body to chassis mounting so you could use this as a slot car if you wanted to 125th scale slot car uh, and it's also got the posts here for the rear glass to hook in. And as you saw in the instructions, there is no rear glass. So this body may have come from a stock AMT Oldsmobile prior to the 1968 re-release or, re or modification release or whatever you want to call it of this kit. And now we do have the Oldsmobile style rear end to this. And that's about it for... Uh, for any super details. Of course we've got our trunk line in here and our door lines, this factory stock door lines, and an opening hood. And this piece you have to remove uh, and you can do that with your hobby saw of course. And I like to put little strips of styrene just along the bottom edge of there just so that the hood doesn't fall through when you're displaying this thing. Alright so here's our undercarriage for this model kit. And as you can tell, it is a simple one-piece undercarriage. And again, harkens to the promotional style peg and post. Now these little pegs here would actually have been drilled through and have been four holes. Uh, you can see that here in these little C sections there, that a screw would drop right down in there and screw it, uh, screw this chassis, I mean, onto your body. Now one thing I, I realized, I made a little mistake, I've been giving you guys this great history of Oldsmobile's 442, and all the while this thing is actually an Oldsmobile 88, which was the next size up from the Cutlass. So I've been making a little, little bit of an error here, but now that I've acknowledged that error, we can move on. Uh, one thing you do get, even though this is simplistic, is a nicely detailed undercarriage. And this is just built quickly so you can... Uh, make your model fast and concentrate more on the interior and the decals and your paint job you're putting on this thing as opposed to parts count with lots of detail in the suspension components and individual frames like we see in later uh, uh, AMT kits pardon me uh, one thing that is missing out of this though with that simplicity is the detail into your rear axle and uh, the only things we really get to see here are the rear axle itself and your control arms up here mounting onto your frame. You don't get to see any of the spring detail or anything in the back here. However, this is a basic kit, so this is the best we get on our chassis. Now we will examine this first part tree, which is our engine block. And I've discovered a few things that are not on our instruction sheet. And if any of you guys have built some of these uh, kits in the past and have come across something different, please let me know in the comments below what the other kits were and what they were intending to do or what they looked like. So let's begin here. So here we have our Oldsmobile engine block, both left and right hand side, with, of course, our transmission. And I do believe this is more of a racing type of transmission. It does appear to look like an automatic, so I don't know, that's that's interesting there. Anyway, we've got our distributor cap and our fan belt, our four-barrel carburetor, starter motor right here, the battery, there's our oil pan, our two cylinder heads, our intake manifold. Uh, now we get a bit of the roll bar, roll cage in here on this sprue, as well as the grill. Uh, for the front of the bumpers. Then we've got our fan here. We've got our air cleaner, stock style air cleaner. There's our water pump and um, front engine cover. Here's our alternator on the back. Now look at this. 
There is a GM671 blower sitting in here with a special front engine cover. So if any of you guys have built this thing this way in a different version of this kit, let me know in the comments below which kit it was that had this big huge GM blower in it. Must have been some kind of cool dragster or something. So I'd like to see that. Uh, anyway, if you have a part number, I can also look that up myself later on. If we just turn this over here, you can see the uh, alternator is sort of hollow in there. Uh, not too much detail on this side. There is quite a bit of flash, as you can see on this carburetor. It's almost like it's all squeezed out the side. Of course, that is a definition of flash. So you will have to take your standard number 11 hobby knife and go around and get rid of all that flash. Again, the detail is not bad. I mean, that transmission there, if I can catch in on it, got some good detail to it. I'm just trying to get my camera to lock in. It's got a little mounting pin at the back here. Go on your cross brace. But yeah, still it's pretty nice. Alright, let's put down our engine here and move on to the next piece. Our next part tree actually has three different types of parts on it. We have, of course, our hood, which is a body panel, basically. Our exhaust pipes, which are engine components. And then our front bucket seat, a racing one with the four-point seat belt on it, four-point racing harness. And, of course, this is an interior component. Now, if we take this and turn it over, we should see... Yep, there they are, the mold marks. These ones are quite high, which is actually better than sinkholes. I prefer this because you can actually cut these down and eliminate them properly, as opposed to sinkholes where you have to fill them up, cross sand them, and then uh, you might have to refill it again if your putty was a little bit low or shrunk or sank. Now here, that's our fireproof matting in there, molded in nicely. And there are some little latch bits in here. They, these would not be latches, pardon me. These are the clips that are holding your fireproof mat in. And then we've got our seat back here with, of course, some more mold marks. And you're going to have to file those off. There is a bit of flash here, and there's kind of a... Well, there's a bump on our exhaust headers here. So this would have to be, of course, cleaned up with... In there, I'd use a number 16 hobby knife and just maneuver it around, or even some files. And, of course, here we have our hood pins molded onto the top of the hood. And now we have our interior bucket. And this is a really interesting-looking interior bucket. It's, it's very much like they had an existing Oldsmobile promotional car and AMT at the time did their best to completely eliminate every detail out of this interior bucket that they could that did not meet up with the race car type standards. So check this thing out. It's completely smooth here, completely smooth down here on the rear bench seat. Like in a lot of kits you will find if they're making a race car version there will still be a bench seat with uh, upholstery in here. This has absolutely nothing. And then if you turn the sides here, there's nothing there either. Oh, I'm wrong. Sorry. They, there are little raised rivets here. But other than that, it is dead flat. <laughs> there's not even like a window winder. But then, of course, in the real race car... All right, they wouldn't have a bench seat here. This would be like flat to the floor and then come straight up. But uh, this is exactly what you would expect out of a race car. No carpets. Nothing. So AMT, although this looks like they obliterated a promotional model of the past, it's actually done the correct thing in 
the appearance of this as a race car. So again, we have four big buttons here, mold marks. But again, these are raised, so you can get your number 16 hobby knife in there and cross scrape it and all that and get rid of these bumps. And here we have our regular standard, or uh, yes, standard transmission type pedal arrangement. So you got your gas pedal, your brake, and of course your clutch over here. And there is a little square thing for your steering column to lock into. And then on the other end of the sprue here, we have our dashboard. Now, if you look at this thing, they have done everything in their power as a race car, again, true to the race car, to eliminate any detail on the dashboard that is not uh, stock. So here we have an aluminum panel uh, put in there with, of course, a, um, a instrument gauge on here. There would be your speedometer up here, which is still part of the stock Oldsmobile. And then here, where your glove compartment and radio and all that would be, you have some of those possibly Stuart Wagner uh, gauges. So you'd have your your ammeter, your um, temperature, and something else, oil pressure probably. And, of course, another big gauge sitting here. So, again, this is all about racing. There's nothing stock about it at all. And it's even smoothed out here on the top of your dashboard. So, again, very nicely done. And again, hearkening back to your promotional model kit. Now here in this little bag, we have a steering wheel. This is our racing steering wheel. I'm not gonna take it out of the bag, so I'm just gonna work around our camera with it. Again, this is a very typical of that era. This was a safety style wheel. So the wheel center, if you notice, is quite far down from the steering wheel itself. And this was their safety idea back in the 60s is if you come to a sudden stop at a traffic light and your head you get rear-ended and your head goes forward or whatever it would not you would not get impaled by the steering column itself you would just bash off on the steering wheel bend this over of course <laughs> traffic accidents is not a nice thing to talk about on this series but at any rate that's how they designed these steering wheels and this of course is a prime example of that style this one, of course, being for racing, so again, even more safety involved, you know, in that frame of thinking. Now, I've noticed one thing a lot about the RC2 kits. Every time I open one of these, there's always a steering wheel in a bag. So I don't know if they break off the parts tree and then someone puts them in, or if they, in the factory, purposely had, you know, someone sitting there cutting off steering wheels and putting them into little bags. So if any of you guys worked for RC2 back in the day, maybe you could explain this to me in the comments below because it's baffling. It's like the only company that ever took steering wheels and stuffed them in little bags. But anyway, let me know in the comments below. As for the rest of our interior, here are more of the roll cage components and that flat aluminum panel, which would be used to blank out the back seat. Of course, here we have our padding on our roll bars to protect the driver. And again, there's a lot of flash on here. Got a little fire extinguisher there as well. Turn this over, you can see some mold marks on this side. On the bottom here of our cover plate, which you might not need to scrape these off because, again, this is going to be covered over. You won't see it. But here on our roll bar, there is another raised button there. So th these ones are a bit trickier, although with it being out in the open on a tube, they are a bit easier. You just take your file and file this way, move the piece, file a little on the top, and then file from this way. Always keep your file moving in a circular position when you're going around these things, sort of like this way, you know, so that uh, actually it'd be like this. So you're going like that around so you don't file a flat spot in it and have it end up looking like the handle is wrench because <laughs> that's not what you want to do in this situation you want to have these filed down nice and round now here we have a parts tree that combines the interior pieces as well as the body pieces and the radiator and this strange piece which i'm not sure what that is 
However, here we have our roll bar, and this would be on the passenger side of that roll cage because it doesn't have any padding going on. This is, of course, from our floorboard up the side of the seat, in the rear seat, the cover. And then here we have our firewall. Uh, and it's funny, this firewall is actually closer to the stock Oldsmobile than the racing, because here we have our heater motor. <laughs> okay, but anyway, there's our radiator here, the racing style radiator. And again, this part I'm not sure of. So let's turn this over. And again, this might have come from some earlier kit, or, or it might be an engine stand or some bizarre thing. And anyway, there's a, our uh, cover here. Now, unfortunately, the mold marks are actually right on the details. So AMT would have been better back in the day to have this molded on this side so that those... Uh, those mold pins here, they would be on that smooth side instead of the other way around. Okay, there's a little hole for our, uh, our other end of the roll cage to go through. Back of the firewall. The radiator has this nice uh, perimeter frame around it on this side. And then again, like I'm baffled onto what this thing is. If you built this car in the past, you know, out of a, a different version or something, now maybe you can explain this part here. It's a real mystery. But anyway, again, some more nicely detailed components. Now here we have a bunch of the body panels. These are of course the racing blank off panels. So we have our two lower rocker shields sitting here. Then we have our front spoiler which would go underneath the front bumper. And then here we have the shield, the short shield which goes in the front and the long shield which will go into our rear bumper. And speaking of our front and rear bumper, here they are in all their glory. They do have these long pins coming off the back so that they will extend out of the car body just the way they would in the real racers. Then here we have our deep wheel backs and our sunken wheel fronts. These are steel wheels which would be factory stock steel wheels but of course they have been sunken in and extended out and all the rest of the stuff so that would not be the way they would do it stock. However, they, there is some very nice detail in here. And here we have our horns, which again would be our factory stock components. So why they're in here, I'm not quite sure, unless you need horns racing in this type of series, but I don't know. Oh, and we also have a 1965 license plate here, I just noticed. So turning these over, you can see like just how deep these are. And then when you add on this, you're, you're coming out about here somewhere to the end of my finger there with these wheels. So quite deep, massive style wheels. Of course, a lot of rubber surface on that road for extended grip. So that's very nice. So here you can see how far out these bumpers are sticking off the body with this being, of course, the, the uh, front bumper where it's mounting onto. So quite big. And again, a lot of these really high mold marks on this kit, which of course you will need to sit there and file down and make them dead flat. But look at the bolt pattern detail in here. I mean, that's that's as good as accurate as you can get. Of course, we have uh, is it five in there? Looks like more. It looks like six or eight lugs in here. So quite a lot. One, two, three. Yeah, six bolt pattern. Six bolt pattern wheels so that these big rubber tires don't go ripping off our brake drums. So now we have my favorite part of all these model kits, and that is the chrome tree, because I like the way it shines. <laughs> However, in this particular model, we're not getting much chrome, which again fits with the race car theory. 
So here we have our chrome front grille and our chrome rear bumper. Then we have a tachometer sitting here as well as our gas cap. And then here we have those big header connectors which are chrome plated, our gear shift lever which go through the floor, and a mirror, the stock mirror down here. There's our valve covers and here we have our little mirrors. So let's bring this up into the camera. Now the reason why I was holding this down is if I let go it falls out. That's because we have these gigantic hooks here sitting on that rear bumper which again is part of the promotional model style of making a model. And again here we have these great big mold buttons sitting there which again you'd have to file down with your number 11 or number 16 hobby knife on this one and we could use a flat file because we got good access to the back and you could paint this in here flat black just to make it kind of disappear when you open up your hood uh, now you can see some of the detail on our components it's kind of crisp a little bit sort of plugged up with the chrome tachometer is pretty nice you can see the gauge is on here You'd of course have to paint that flat black and then wipe off the top and paint your needle red. Just like this stick here. So you can see where, where your needle is on your tachometer. Now here we have our molded in headlights, but again these are of course blanked off. There's your turn signals in there. Actually it's, it's a grill. It's a grill. Not a boy, but a grill. No, anyway. <laughs> Okay, and our rear bumper here has some of the turn signal uh, reverse lights blocked off here on little metal metal plates. But again, this of course is all out race car. So next up we have our one and only piece of glass and clear component in this entire model, which of course is our front windshield. And it comes in a little bag, which I'm going to just leave leave this in the bag because there's not too much to see out of this. It is a front windshield. So next up we get into our tires. These are simplicity at its finest. These tires are all the same size and all the same width. The only thing on here is Goodyear. <laughs> there's no uh, no other markings, you know, like GS40 or anything like that or nothing it just says Goodyear no polyglass GT 40s GT 70s nothing uh, and these are wheel our tire backs and of course our two metal axles so I'll just bring these up to the camera here so like I said you can see Goodyear along the top and nothing else these are big monstrously wide slicks which of course they said to sand down or to uh, Put a cross pattern in there and then of course these are the rear inserts so they would go in like this there it's a nice tight fit into there uh, of course I'd have to maneuver it around a little more in my spare time I hope I can get this out yeah okay I can get that out because <laughs> I'll have to build this model later but anyway you can see it fits in there and these are some nice tires. I I think our tire spinning tool, I'm using this in my electric drill. I think they should be able to fit in there. This could be, oh yeah, there we go. So yeah, you would uh, put this in your drill, turn your drill on and sand it onto a sanding block just to smooth this thing out. And it should look good. It doesn't seem to well I don't know you got to be careful of the distortion here you can see it's uh, kind of making these tires into a bit of a bell here so you might have a bit of an issue with your sandpaper but overall it should be okay so let's just pull this out and there we go and there's our wheels and our tires and then of course you get a nicely chrome plated metal axle here for your axles through the car. And last but not least, we have our big reveal of our deck all sheet. And I'll just remove the yellow paper that they use to protect it with. 
And now, look at how cool this is. So here we get some nice red and black letters and numbers. Actually, yeah, there's letters, see? <laughs> Primarily the numbers that are what we're looking at. Now here we have 88, which would refer to the Olds Rocket 88, which is, of course, what the car is based on. Here we have some nice scallops in here. And again, for our hood, to make it look a little more exciting than just a flat panel. Then we've got our Oldsmobile logos in here, which is the same logo that was used on my 72 Oldsmobile. Got Ertl's Garage, of course, Ertl AMT. Some nice, more modern AMT uh, logos here. Now, of course, these are not the original style AMT logo, but these are more of the RC2 style, which was more popular in the late 90s, early 2000s. Here we've got our Rocket 425, referring, of course, to our engine. You can be Wild Bill or Bad Bart with your car. Sponsored by Ron's Auto Body or the Ertl's Garage. And then here's our uh, little graphic for Ron's. Then we've got our Goodyear tire logos here. Johnson. Now there's another one of these race things I am not sure about. So if you know what Johnson is, let me know. <laughs> uh, okay, so then we've got this, LL. I'm not sure what that would refer to either. So let's just move this up into the camera here. Take a look at some of the finer decals on here. So of course there's our numbers and they go up from 1 to 0. So you do have a lot of options of making uh, cars from, you know, car number 12 or 56 or whatever you want to do here, even like 59, moving the numbers around. You, you could do 88 for your hood and then have these on your doors. It's all up to you, of course, preference. There you can see the uh, Oldsmobile logos. Now it's interesting they show in here it's blue. Now my cutlass it was the uh, same kind of mahogany type red as this. Um, burgundy I guess. Not mahogany. <laughs> That's wood. Okay anyway so yeah you can see the uh, the interesting things. There's your Johnson's again. So write in the comments below what Johnson's is because I don't I'm not familiar with that one at all. Of course, Ron's would be referring to Ron's auto body. But again, very nice details and decals. It is kind of cool to have some of these AMT Ertl things sitting around. I'm not sure if you're going to use them, but you could actually use them in like a garage diorama on the back wall. It's just whatever kind of preference you guys like to do. And that completes our look at the Street Stock and Strip 1965 Olds 88 Modified Stalker by AMT Ertl. RC2. Well, I hope you enjoyed this amazing review of the 1965 Olds Modified Stalker. A really cool kit and should make a good diorama piece for your racetrack diorama. Rama, rama, rama. Anyway, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. A pound at the notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first one to be in the pits ready to race. And let's get this video up to 100 likes so it goes really high up in Google searches, because that's always fun. Yeah. Okay, until next time, we will see you at the track.